You know half the story. In November, when the campaign is behind him, surely, for Edmund's sake, the two of you are going to get together and patch things up. I wish I could believe that Frank will have more time for a private life after the election in November than he does now. But I think the real problem is that somehow we all thought this lovely fantasy could survive amidst all these political realities. I think what really makes me angry is somehow the survival seems to depend on me, only I'm not in control of the political realities. I know. I'm sorry, too. I don't like it either. I know you don't, darling. Darling, listen, the gang from Neurology is leaving the rest of us. Oh. You want to come out and say goodbye? Oh, certainly, <laughs> certainly. Uh, Jillian, when you get a moment, come by to see me. I know, May. Thanks. What are you trying to do to yourself and to Frank? Nancy Feldman is now being played by Megan McCracken. On an all new I Wanna Be a Soap Star, forget the boardroom. We've got the bedroom. Love scene, baby. It's definitely more steamy than I expected. But the hottest scenes, they're both married, are happening behind the scenes. Between Mikel and myself, there's sexual chemistry. I want to be a soap star. Saturday at 8, only on soap. Mayor, don't. You're the last person in the world I want to get into a debate about this. Look, I'm not trying to find an argument. And, and I know it's none of my business, yeah. but I can't stand it. After all the two of you have been through, after all of the disappointments and delays and mischances, when there's finally a little bit of hope for you and Frank, you just let it go. If it's not working, isn't it better to accept that and let go of it now? How do you know it's not working? Because I've spent all spring on it. Weeks and weeks watching your brother struggling to find a place for Edmund and me against his uh, Ray's grand plan for his future. Now the truth is that he doesn't have time for a wife and sons and the kind of life we hope to have. I mean, one of us has to be realistic about that. And, and pretending otherwise is too painful. Tough. I beg your pardon? What you've been learning this spring is that, that loving is, is hard. And that, that learning to make a loving relationship work is even harder. And, and that love in the middle of a political campaign takes all of the patience and understanding in the world. Well, tough. That's the name of the game. That's what it's all about. And you know already that being apart from each other is worse. Maybe not. Come on, but Jill. let me suggest that you don't know as much about this as you think you do. I know that my brother has never loved anyone but you and never will. I know how miserable he was when you were apart for the good part of a year. I know how much you missed him and wanted him. And I know that you're mad, and I would like to shut up. And I wish that you would. But I can't. I'm sorry, Jill. But please, don't be stupid. I mean, really, so much can happen between now and November. It has happened already. Well, then, what about Edmund? What about him? Okay, okay, I may not be able to give him the father that he needs, but I'll tell you one thing that I can do and will do, and that's protect him from weeks and months and years and maybe a whole lifetime of knowing that his, in his father's time and attention he ran a poor second to every registered voter in the state of New York. That is so unfair. Oh, no, it isn't. A father shares experience, responsibility, he's there. Okay, maybe not every day, but he's there in some dependable way, and Frank can't do that. His priorities are elsewhere. For now. No, for as long as he's interested in elective office and as long as Ray Woodard is interested in him, which will probably be for the next 50 years. You know, I remember a lot of what you said about father's rights when you thought that Seneca was Edmund's father. Yeah. Well, doesn't that all apply to Frank now? Fatherhood. 
goes along with the father's responsibilities. <sighs> Mayor, your brother can't even publicly acknowledge that Frank is his, uh, that, that Edmund is his son, let alone re assume responsibility for him. I'm sorry, Joe, I just don't understand. I mean, I just don't understand. Isn't, just because Frank can't be with Edmund on a day-to-day -day basis, isn't, isn't fathering, some kind of fathering, better than none at all? Fathering is just not biology. That's Seneca's argument. Which doesn't make it any less true. And speaking from past experience, for me, it is easier not to depend and rely and believe on Frank than to love him and to lose him. Well, I'm sorry. I just don't think you have the right to make that decision for Frank's son. Mayor, if I don't, who does? Oh, uh, excuse me. Yes, Patrick. Uh, sorry, I'll be No, no, you. no, don't leave. Uh, I guess I stayed too long. Crazy. They're both crazy. Jill and Frank? It isn't working. She thinks it's over. Maybe things will look better when he's back from this trip. I hope so. Look, I've got to go over to the hospital. Aren't you going to stay and say hi to Siobhan? Can't. But give her love and tell her I'll see her as soon as I can. Okay. Give a message for me? Sure. Say hi to Nancy Feldman. Tell her that I'll be by for some catching up as soon as I get a free lunch break. Will do. Night. Night, Patty. Don't worry about that. times can you do the same crossword puzzle? He does it. That's it. What were you doing out of bed? I was bored. So you decided to take a little walk? I just wanted to get my book. See this buzzer? That's to call the nurse. I didn't want to bother anybody. I would have made it to All right, let me explain a few things to you. You're in this hospital because you're sick. There are plenty of people here to help you. You're supposed to bother them. However, we are overcrowded and understaffed to the point where it's criminal to waste time and space on patients who invite unnecessary accidents because they don't use simple common sense. Which brings us to number one. Two. One. You could have hurt yourself very badly. I just didn't want to... You just wanted to see if you could do it. Maybe. Yeah. Nancy, you can't. Not yet. Trust me. Are you mad? Yes. Okay. Which book did you want? My Life by Isadora Duncan. Isadora Duncan, the wild and impetuous dancer who met a tragic fate. <laughs> Is it okay to laugh? Yeah. Thanks. Oh. Is that for me? It is. It's a piece of my mother's seed cake from our going away party for Bucky Carter. Your best friend? Yeah. He's moving to Boston. Oh. You must be sorry about that. 
Yeah. Aunt? Sad. A uh, little lonely. I don't know. I'm sorry. You remind me of Shannon. Who? A beautiful young girl who was possessed of great impatience and a terrible thirst for knowledge. Oh. Oh, a strange and sad thing befell her. What was that? In Shannon's part of the country, you see, there was a magical circle of trees with red berries, and in the middle of that circle was a well, deep beyond knowing, and famed far and wide for the great silver trout that swam in its waters. They swam up from the center of the earth to eat the red berries that fell into the well from the encircling trees. And after they'd eaten, their sides were marked for a day and a night with the red stains of the fruit. Now, the truth was that if a man caught one of the trout with the stains still upon it and he cooked it and he ate it, he was possessed of all knowledge. So, needless to say, many men spent long hours fishing at the well, but no woman was allowed. Now, it was whispered that something dreadful would happen if a woman ate the flesh of a berry-stained trout. Tomaine? Much worse. May I continue? Please do. So, along came Shannon, a quick, bright girl with her nose in a book from morning till night. And she wanted knowledge more than anything else in the world. So, she waited till evening, when the men had gone. And she lit herself a fire and fanned the flames and she walked over to the side of the well and dropped in her line. A clever girl that she was, she caught a trout straight away. She popped it onto the coals and cooked it. But she'd no sooner opened her mouth to take a bite when there was a terrible clap of thunder and a great shaking of the earth and up from the heart of the well burst a torrent of water and it swept up poor Shannon and it carried her all the way down to the sea and she was never heard of again. The river, however, still flows in the path it carried her and it's called by her name, the River Shannon. Gloria Steinem would choke. Well, yeah. But I promise never again to go out of bed looking for a book. I'll call the nurse. Good. And thank you. For? The story, and the cake, and the lecture, and you. Soap Talk is television's new happy hour with celebrities, fashion, and more. We are covering the gamut. Tonight at 11, only on SoapNet. Every Sunday, SoapNet's running four marathons you don't have to train for. <sighs> Sunday, catch up on the whole week's episodes of One Life to Live, All My Children, Days of Our Lives, and General Hospital. Another reason SoapNet is the new way to watch soaps. Now is that brilliant? SoapNet Sunday Marathons. Can you go the distance? Uh, Mary, where do you want this? Anywhere. Bob, don't put that down there. I just cleaned. Okay. I'm sorry, Bob. It's not you. I, I just had this enormous fight with Jill. Jill? I know. It's none of my business. Come on. I didn't say anything. Well, you're right. It makes me so mad. She and Frank are having trouble, and she just wants to cop out on it. What do you mean, the cops of the campaign? Yeah. It's an impossible situation, I know, but he warned her. They already knew what it would be like. She's had her own experience. She knows what the summer was supposed to be, and I ru it's rough, I know. But Frank doesn't want it this way either. Uh, well, Jill should understand that. She seems to have forgotten. If only she could survive until November. Are you going up to visit Frank this weekend? Yeah, yeah, I gotta take some checks up for him to sign. Good. Hey, now maybe I can't do anything. Well, you'll be there. What Frank needs now is people who love him to s support him, not to... This is none of my business. I'm gonna shut up now. <laughs> but what is with Jill? Anyway, I feel like this is their last chance. Bob, hmm? Alicia just came in. Alicia? 
Can I get you anything to drink? Some coffee, how about that? No, thank you, Johnny. Hey, what are you doing here? Has Angel had a... No, no, he's fine. I want to talk to you. Sure. Why aren't you up in Buffalo with Ray? I quit my job. I'm not working for her anymore. I can't. I'm tired of her secrets. I'm tired of her life. I just don't want it anymore. I don't understand. I just don't want to work for her. Yeah, what was the problem? I didn't like it. I don't understand it. Maybe I do, and that's what scares me. Alicia, look, you're talking in circles. You're going to have to explain this whole thing to me. I left, that's all. You don't leave a campaign, you don't quit a job without there being some kind of a reason. Was Ray working you too hard? Alicia, look, you know you're working for Frank, too. Now, why didn't you go to him? He, he won't let Ray take advantage of you or anything. Maybe you don't know Frank as well as you think you do. Oh, come on, I've known Frank all my life. Now, I don't know what's going on up there, but if you and Ray are having trouble, he's just the person to help. I mean, he's fair. He's engaged to Joe Coleridge, and he's having an affair with Ray, and I don't want anything more to do with it. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you know what you're saying? Yes, I do. An affair? You're sure of that? I am. No, Alicia, maybe you don't understand the situation or something. I think I do. No, no, no. I mean, Frank and Jill are having a rough time of it. That's no secret. You know that. I mean, that's probably where this thing Bob, came please. from. It happened. Please. Listen to me. I didn't want to see it either. It's not just the affair. It's been wrong from the start. I thought I knew what I wanted. I thought I knew these people, but I realize now that I didn't know them at all. And all I want now is to get out before it's too late. Yeah. Are you okay? Maybe Ray's right. Maybe the only way to get what you want is to take it. But if that's true, there's a lot of things in life I'm never gonna have. <laughs> it's funny. You were the one who told me not to work from her for the start. But somehow I'm not sorry I did. I learned. I saw a lot of things, perhaps, I had to see. Not pretty things, but still, maybe it was time. But now I know that I have to get away from it before I lose myself. I don't want anything more to do with money or politics or people who will do anything to get what they want. So what you're gonna do now? Figure out what I want. Where I'm going, start again. Uh, honey, I'll walk you home, okay? No. Okay. Bob, thank you. You gonna be all right? Yes. I think I am. For the first time in a long time. Sure. Why don't you stay a while, dear, and let me fix you something? No, thank you, Mayor. Goodbye. Alicia. What's going on? Alicia's left the campaign. Why? She has her reasons. You know, Mary, I think I'm going to go up there tomorrow. Ryan's Hope is next, then spend some time in Bay City on Another World, followed by Port Charles, only on SoapNet, the new way to watch soaps. We lost a patient this morning. Why did he have to die? Why? If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. My God, how do you expect me to react? Till death do us part. Amanda Woodward. <gasps> oh, ah! 
You totally did that on purpose. Whatever you do, don't call her a bitch. That only makes her angry. Amanda! Just my butt. Dive into Melrose Place today on SoapNet. Anywhere they'll fit. Top shelf. Anywhere they'll fit on the top shelf. And would you mind checking on Ryan? Just did. She's uh, snoring. Ah, I wonder from whom she inherited that. All right, darling. Ah. The last of it. Just in time. Give me that bottle. Okay. Thank you. Ah, uh, did you lock up? No, no, not yet. Mary, I understand you had words with Jill. Oh, I'm afraid so. And how much did you say to her? Too much. But I couldn't help it. I feel like she's letting him down. Oh, Mary, none of us are in a position to judge that. He loves her, he wants her, and she's walking out on That's him. not entirely fair. I know, but I don't care. Look, if the two of them don't get together, it's little Edmund that has most to lose. No, 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 it's the three of them. And little John. Hey, maybe you could lock Frank and Jill together in the basement. <laughs> That's not funny, Fanelli. Well, being locked in the basement isn't funny either, let me tell you. Look, Frank does not have to be put under lock and key in order to face up to his responsibilities. Oh, if only we all could have learned fatherhood at your knee, Johnny. What a responsible world this would be, huh? All right, now what is that supposed to mean? Oh, what does he mean by that? It means that he thinks it would be a good idea for Frank and Jill to be in a place where they, they could have some time and space alone together where they couldn't walk away from each other. Now, that's not what he said at all. Yeah. Oh, I'm damn Please. glad that everybody's so ready to Jeff, tell me what I mean. Huh? Leave him alone. All right, Jeff. Stop it, all of you. Well, a family party. It's just like I never left home. Siobhan, <laughs> Siobhan! Get out of your back! Never thought you'd get here. Well, you look at that. Look at the monster yeah, him you him brought him. with you. Siobhan. Oh, oh, darling, where did you get this animal? Why are you cutting? Dive into Melrose Place, weekdays at 6, only on SoapNet. Wait, I'm beginning to remember. SoapNet, pure soap 24-7. It's just the same. You haven't changed anything. <laughs> Two most notable changes are sound asleep in the bedroom, but you'll see them in the morning, darling. Listen, how, how old was little John when he went off to Seattle? About three months, right? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> well, wait you see him now. He's just the handsomest, cutest kid in the whole world. <laughs> and you're only the most fanatical grandfather. Hey, Daddy, will you take these? Sure. Yes, Daddy. Ah, uh, hey. Siobhan's just a little bit independent. Tell me about the anchor. He shows the strain. Mm -hmm. Let me see a doctor about it. Yeah, as a matter of fact, there was a doctor there when it happened. Ah. Hey, Di, you can just take Ryan's things and throw them on the floor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there. All of Mother's letters have been full of Ryan and what a beautiful baby she is. We think she's pretty special. <laughs> and you! What about me? Last year, all of Mother's letters were full of you and all the hell you were raising. I'm sorry I missed it. <laughs> well, I'm uh, sure you would have felt right at home. <laughs> oh. Siobhan, well, the love of heaven, would you tell me about that ankle of yours and the dog and, and the strike and the jail and all the rest of it? I don't know which question to ask. <laughs> well, the dog and my ankle are part of the same story. Well, well where did he come from, anyway? Here. I found him on the street in Seattle. Three years can pass, a 